always unsavory. Doing deals with terrorists doesn't sound as good, does it? And that's how you lose. Cutting deals with terrorists doesn't sound good? Yeah, well, of course. They designated the entire nation of Iran as terrorists. What are you going to do? That's so fucking annoying. All right, let's start with the prisoner swap. Americans wrongfully detained for years in Iran. Oh, no, not the version. Thank you for the 25 US. gifted. In fact, their plane landed just this morning at Fort Belvoir in Virginia. That's near Washington. After months of secret negotiations to make this happen, the group includes two businessmen, an environmentalist, and a former UN worker. Chief Foreign Affairs Correspondent Margaret Brennan looks now at how this deal came together. I don't get... I don't get what's happening with the... Uh, with the two people. Now we know the name of another person. Yeah, the shadow people. Just before dawn, the five newly freed Americans touched down today on U.S. soil. It means that husbands and wives, fathers and children, grandparents can hug each other again. Businessman Imad Shargi and environmentalist Murad Tabaz have... I think because these guys are also, uh, like... Iranian that's another reason why the conservatives have no issue just being like fuck the American government for getting these guys back <laughs> you know what I mean because like I feel like if they were white you know bright white you know what I'm saying if they were like super fucking white and their names were like Stephen and Hank and and they were negotiating to get them back like the Republican Party would have a harder time being like, fuck the Biden administration for doing this. Fuck you guys. You know what I mean? Like, they were going to do that anyway because, you know, no matter what Brandon does, it's bad, right? Brandon bad. But it, they will say like, oh, they, you negotiated with terrorists. Fuck you for doing that. Fuck you for, you know, giving them $6 billion. And it's like, well, it was their $6 billion. You know what I mean? It's kind of weird that... They're, they're, it's like Iran's own $6 billion. The fact that like South Korea just like bought oil from them and then just didn't pay them because America was like, don't pay these guys. Well, that doesn't change anything. You know, they should have swapped me in. I want to visit Iran so badly, brother. I feel like if you go as an American citizen, you can just like kind of stay there forever. <laughs> it seems like, seems like they'll, they'll keep you. <laughs> I also, I too want to go to Iran as well. I feel like Iran is. It is very nice. Not the government, but, you know, the people are sick. The country is dope. Kind of, kind of shitty. Uh, what is this? Political Propaganda 101 explained. Let's go. Five Americans illegally detained by Iran are scheduled for release. They're about to come home. But you don't seem to talk about the two that you left behind to be executed. Wait, what? Family of U.S. resident jailed in Iran outraged over prisoner swap. Oh, no. They didn't get everybody back. Those expressing outrage include a family of Jamshid Sharmat, a prisoner who was not included in the deal. The German-Iranian, who was also has U.S. residency, was kidnapped in Dubai and sentenced to charges of corruption of earth. Well, I think he's German. That's why. Dude, America is so... America does not give a fuck, dude. Look at Jamal Khashoggi. He was Saudi... And American. And they were like, yeah, eh, whatever. Yeah, the Saudi government chopped them up. It's fine. What is corruption of earth? What is happening in Iran? Why do they have so many, like, insane kind of cool charges? You know what I mean? Corruption of earth? What the fuck does that mean? Broke today that the Biden administration is taking steps to allow for the release of about six billion dollars in Iranian money. Iranian money, you see that language is cleverly used, but you're not actually giving it back to the Iranian people, are you? You're giving it to the terrorists that they're trying to collapse, not enrich. Now, doing deals with an adversary like Iran is- Okay, first of all, I don't, I don't agree with that part. It's like, it's their money, what do you mean? Like, what? They're not, the fuck? It's just their money. Like, that part I don't understand when people are like, oh, I can't believe you're giving money to Iran. It's like, yeah, like, but it's their money. You know what I mean? If you get that charge, they are going to execute you. So what? what is that charge? I don't even know what that charge is. 
always unsavory. Doing deals with terrorists doesn't sound as good, does it? And that's how you lose. Cutting deals with terrorists doesn't sound good? Yeah, well, of course. They designated the entire nation of Iran as terrorists. What are you going to do? Okay, so it's called Mofsed e Filars or Fasad al Fel Ars. What is this? Corruption or the title of capital crimes of the person is guilty of them in Iran, which have been translated to the English language as spreading corruption on earth, spreading corruption that threatens the political well being, corrupt of the earth, one who is charged with spreading corruption, gross offenders of the moral order, and enemies of God on earth. Okay, that one seems kind of sick. Like, that's like, that's kind of a fire thing. Like, this man is the enemy of God on earth. Is like, that goes fucking hard. I guess it means just a cat. Oh, God. It's such a lame thing, though. But I guess it's... it's If it's just for, like, an indictment of political dissent, then that sucks. You know what I mean? It's like... It's literally the lamest fucking thing with the maximum penalty and the maximum charge. Spreading misinformation on the internet. It goes really hard until you hear that from an Iranian police officer. Brother, I am not going to Iran. So I will not be hearing that from an Iranian police officer at any point, I think. But it says in the criminal code, in 1996, they were adopted. Some changes were made in 2012. Oh, they had... <laughs> we love criminal justice reform, don't we, folks? Okay. Uh, Article 284 of the codes is dedicated to Baghi armed rebellion and afsad e fil and was revived by the broadening of uh, those who may be punished by execution. Uh, subject to execution includes whoever engages extensively in commission of widespread crime against masses, crimes against homeland or external security, spreading rumors and or uttering slander. Wait, what, what the fuck? Bro, bro. <laughs> Yo, okay, I'm kind of down for this. I'm kind of down for this, dude. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you slandering me on Twitter? It's time for some... It's time for some Mufsid e fil ours for you. You know what I mean? Your ours is about to get fucking locked up. Spreading hazardous or poisonous substances, financial malfeasance in the affairs of the state, establishing brothels or involvement in their operation, causing extensive disturbance in public order. <laughs> They're, dude, I'm canceling Iran for being anti-sex work. Causing security. By the way, this is everything. This literally is like, this is like the meme, the, the Venezuela meme from Parks and Recreation. It's like, it's basically everything that you can do, like all the fun stuff. You know what I mean? Spreading rumors, doing slander, you're dead. Okay? Causing security risks, spreading, spreading hazardous or poisonous substances, you're dead. Anyway. Mehmet Walsholu. <laughs> You're such a fucking idiot. Having a Turkish guy who who named himself Mehmet Walsholu is just like if you're Turkish, you shouldn't know about Matt Walsh, okay? Like you should not know who Matt Walsh is. You're Turkish. This is like extremely online American shit, okay? Why the fuck do you know about... Dude, I'm not Turkish, brother. Oh, you just... You, why the fuck do you... Why did you name yourself Mehmet Walshola then? Brother, you think this is wild? Salam Baradan man, Irani Hastam. Oh. Yes, I'm an Amerabu like you. Brother, you think this is wild? I was detained by the Iranian police once. They just arrest you for bad vibes, man. I'm dead serious. Because I love the name, man. That is like... Your brain is so fucking broken, dude. I'm sorry. Your brain is so fucking broken. Motherfucker's name is Mehmet Walshola, who he he's like he he cares about what's going on in like the intricacies of American politics. Anyway, so brother, you've made Mehmet Walshola jokes before. I know it's just still funny to see someone who's not American, I guess, uh, have that name. Um, so that's wild. The 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 uh, charges are pretty wild. I mean, they seem pretty. They seem pretty sick. Like, they seem like a very cool name for something that just means, like, something that ranges from, like, poisoning people to just lying. <laughs> I feel like there should be different punishments 
or at least like a different criminal code for for each of those individual acts you know what i mean they're like oh did you did you lie or did you they they look up the criminal code and they're like uh it says here that you may have lied or spread hazardous material to the public to kill them you know what i mean okay with your audience but joe biden is making the release of american hostages a priority that's a good thing joe biden okay so he is introduced here as a savior in this language is making the release of american hostages a priority that's interesting because some of these hostages have been there since 2015 when you had the last nuclear deal and nobody seems to have cared about them until now when it's time to have the next nuclear like, what does she want? Does she want, like, America to not facilitate a denuclearization deal with Iran? Like, I don't understand this part. Like, what, what the fuck's happening here? Okay, I can't. I don't care about this. Let's just watch the actual propaganda. Been prisoners since 2018 held on what the U.S. considers trumped-up charges. Shargi's family said his freedom meant... <laughs> yeah, the Iranians that we had, though, in America, not trumped-up charges. <laughs> like, one of those guys, one of those guys was arrested for selling uh, or, or trying to send laboratory equipment, okay? Which is also insane. I'm not saying these guys are, like, definitely agents, and that's why it was totally morally just for them to be apprehended by the Iranian government, okay? I'm not saying that at all. I feel like, at this point, Iran is just like, oh, are you an American citizen? Oh, cool, okay, well, you know, <laughs> maybe you should uh, come with us for a little bit. Let's see. People 100% say this is bullshit because they're Iranian-American and not American-American. I think that's part of it, yeah. There are certain wealthy Iranians who would literally rather have Iran nuked than have the existing government continue. Yeah, I mean, I see, I, I, I know, I know that there's, like, a lot of people who are, like, they do the classic, like, my people yearn for freedom. Please, we must nuke Iran. But overall, what the fuck? Um, overall, it's like, uh, it's just, these guys get caught up in this scheme as a as a political pawn it was the first time in years that they felt light in their homes three other american prisoners and two family members accompanied them monday on a qatar airways flight for doha where they were handed over to u.s custody for 51 year old businessman siamak namazi that here's the thing bro i'm not going to iran unless like the government is you know 100 percent giving me assurances and i'm going as like like an envoy or something, okay? Like, let's be fucking real. There is not, there's no, like, tourism opportunity happening for me there, okay? As much as I would love to, it's one of, it, it's another place. And I would say the same about China, too, okay? Straight up. I love China, would love to visit, definitely want to go uh, to China. But I am not fucking going unless I have, like, one, a visa, and two, uh, I'm going with, like, uh, people that know what the fuck is up and have at least some level of, like, uh, you know, political power. Anthony Bourdain went to both? Yeah. But it's a little bit different. You'd be fine in China with the fuck, lol. I just don't want to, I don't want to, you know. I've said, I've said some stuff about uh, Xinjiang that I worry will uh, reach the wrong Jake is in China right now chilling. Yeah, I'm not saying it's the same. I'm not, I'm a different person, okay? Hello? I'm a little bit different than Jake and Bake Live as far as like commentary and, and, uh, and shit goes. You know what I mean? It's a little bit different. It's a little bit different. I don't understand why the Chinese tourism department give people like you free trips to China is good promo. I think so. It's insane that you think they would arrest an American citizen for their speech. I don't think they would. I, from what I understand, I've talked to a lot of people. Uh, I've talked to a lot of people, and they say that it's just like if something is flagged, they just won't give you a visa. You know what I mean? There's no like, 
issue with you like going to China and being apprehended or anything, but, um, you know, it, it, it's just like, they just won't offer you a v like you can go to the Chinese embassy and try to get a visa. And if they say no, that means you can't go. Um, there's someone in the chat named trap advisor and he says you should definitely not go. What? You need to show them how to speak truth about Shen Yun. Yeah, definitely. I'm going to go to fucking relax. Literally, no one in China knows anything about you. They would definitely arrest Dr. Disbreak before you. I, I don't, I'm not saying that at all. Uh, I'm not, I, I'm just saying I, I'd be a little bit concerned as well. I wanted to give like a, I would, uh, I, I would just be concerned. That's, uh, it's not to the same degree. Flight ended an eight year ordeal. And it's, you know, a day for celebration but tomorrow begins the rest of his life and uh, and it's going to be a long journey towards recovery in exchange for the release president biden granted five iranian nationals clemency two were turned to open stretched arms of loved ones in tehran late monday two remained in the u.s and a fifth joined family in another country according to iranian officials in addition, the regime will have access to $6 billion worth of unfrozen Iranian oil assets held in a restricted account in Qatar. But that's my biggest problem, Liz. Not that the Americans are coming home. Is that now, elements all over the world realize we can get something in exchange for Americans. Let's take some. The Biden administration... Like, no, that's not the case at all. Most of these countries are understandably fucking terrified of the American government... And they're not going to uh, also disrupt the economic process that they have, especially if they're engaging with the United States of America, China included. Okay? So that is an insane take. Iran, on the other hand, is not a country that has any relations with the United States of America. And, and that is not entirely their fault. I think that, would, that is entirely America's fault. I will stand by that. As much as I criticize the Iranian government as much as I can from fucking where I'm standing, who the fuck cares? You know what I mean? Oh, my God. They're a, a, a theocracy. They're authoritarian. They're corrupt. It's like, yeah, no shit. They're reactionary. I, I get it. Uh, but it's entirely in the hands of the United States uh, to normalize these relations. We've done it before. And yet, uh, you know, it's, it's great to have them as like this permanent enemy. Especially because they're not even our enemy. They're the enemy of our allies, okay? Israel and Saudi Arabia, to name two of our major allies in the region. That is the, mace, that's the most frustrating aspect of this because Iran has quite literally been duking it out with Sunni extremists in the region for the longest fucking time, okay? Also, you know... Uh, at times when uh, there were major embargoes and, and blockades implemented on Iran, it's not like America wasn't allowing them to participate in the global marketplace. They were just utilizing Turkey as the, as the country to allow them to participate in the global marketplace. They would just, like, traffic their trade through Turkish routes so that, you know, it wasn't directly allowed, but it was, like, happening through Turkey. Which is great because then you can just like uh, you can use that always as a as a, a criminal prosecution against the Turkish government as well. So I don't know. Um, it's it's stupid. It's silly. Like normalize relations with Iran. Okay. Administration insists the U.S. Treasury will be able to ensure the funds are only used for humanitarian purposes like food and medicine. We have the means and mechanisms to make sure that that happens. The next stop for the freed Americans is a U.S. military facility in the D.C. area for medical support to prepare them to once again be free persons. For CBS Mornings, I'm Margaret Brennan in Washington. <laughs> Joined now by top national security counsel. John Kirby is here to talk to the deal with Iran to free the five Americans, dude. Um, yeah, I mean, this is not a bad thing. For my two cents, let's not normalize relations with fascists. I know, America would never normalize relations with fascists or literally build fascist dictatorships globally, um, especially as a cudgel against, like, uh, social democratic changes happening in a fucking country. You're right. In the history of the United States of America, if we look at America's foreign policy and America's involvement globally, we have infinitely more... Uh, we have infinitely more... 
markers on the other side of that spectrum, okay? We still are aligned with not only like fascist or authoritarian dictatorships, okay? Spokesman John Kirby. John, thanks for coming in you bet. again this morning. What more can you tell us about the reunion? Well, they just landed on U.S. soil uh, early this morning. Um, so they're going to be at a military uh, facility in Virginia for a little while. We want to make sure that they have access to mental, mental and medical health care, whatever they need. Um, and then obviously they're going to be reunited with their families here very, very soon. What more do you know about what they do need? I know that one of the, one of the hostages had, had been dealing with cancer. Another one reportedly had been beaten. Yeah, I mean, they were in Avon prison, uh, one of the most abhorrent, ab abominable places to be uh, treated. Yeah, no, totally. Okay, see, this is, fuck, man. This shit frustrates me so much. It's like, yeah, I know, that prison probably sucks. You know what other prisons suck that we know of? American prisons, dog. What the fuck are you saying? Like, oh, it's the worst place to be on the planet. You know, other than like, uh, I don't know, Angola. Okay, and no, I don't mean Angola like the country. I don't mean Angola in Africa. I mean Angola in Louisiana, the Louisiana State Penitentiary that's named after the same plantation that it stands on. You know what I mean? It's like, fuck. These guys, man, they're really fucked up. Dude. It's one of the worst places to be, dude. One of the worst places to be. Okay. Very, very badly by uh, the Iranians. So, look... The initial reports we have are relatively good health, but we want to make sure that they get all the care that they need, and they'll they'll have access to that care for as long as they need. Canceling the State Department for using a private jet in this affair uh, because of their carbon footprint. Let's talk about the real issues facing society, okay? Uh, sweaty, a PJ? Mm, not great. Uh, each one will be individual. Of course, what they're dealing with is, uh, is uh, obviously individualistic, and we'll just make sure that they've got that care. You know the administration is facing a fair amount of criticism. We saw Senator Mitch yeah. McConnell right there says this is going to embolden Iran, encourage more hostage taking. So look, uh, the regime... What aboutism, lol? What do you, what, this guy got so horny to say what aboutism that he couldn't even fucking write it correctly. Listen, man, I'm a what aboutist, okay? I'm going to do what aboutisms all the time, all right? You want to know why? Because everybody knows the situation in Iran fucking sucks. Using it to cut propaganda against, uh, as an American, like, uh, as an American top brass official is fucking psychotic when it literally happens here and we are supposed to, because we're not like Iran, we're not supposed to be like a theocratic, uh, state, an oppressive theocratic state. We're supposed to be able to chirp about it. So why the fuck are you defending the American regime in here? By saying, what about ism? We've already established that, yeah, the situation in Iran, not great. Sucks, okay? I hate that shit. Whenever people go, hmm, you're doing what about ism? It's like, why? Why, why, do you, why do you care? Like, what do you mean, what about ism? What the fuck do you mean? I'm an American. I live in America. Are, is this a fucking dictatorship? Can I say that shit sucks here? Okay? Without... A bunch of fucking State Department dick riders coming in and being like, ha, got him. And Tehran has been taking American hostages and foreign hostages for 40 some odd years. Um, and this is a tactic they've used in the past. It is different. Wait, what? You're gaining traction in Chinese YouTube called Bili Bili, by the way? Shut the fuck up. Are you serious? There is no way this is real. What? The traction? This has got 709 views, man. I'm getting no traction. Difficult to say what this is going to mean for the future, except to say that we're going to continue to put pressure on the Iranian regime. We're not going to turn a blind eye to their destabilizing behavior, and we're certainly not going to turn a blind eye to the potential for additional hostage taking. That's why the State Department has a new designation for Iran, a D, a D designation, so that Americans, if you're going to go there, you, you need to understand that risk. Now, obviously, we strongly urge... <laughs> We changed the designation of traveling to Iran. If you go there, you're gonna get it. You're gonna you're gonna get arrested. Okay, you're gonna become a political token. You're gonna become a political pawn. Americans not to go to Iran and not to be in Iran, particularly if you're a, a dual national. So look, we're not turning a blind eye to anything that Iran's doing in the region, including this. Why do you think Iran made this deal now? It's difficult to know why now. I would tell you that this was months in the making. 
So I, I would be careful to sort of peg this to some date on the calendar or some recent event. This is really was months and months and months in the making. It all came together here just, just this month. And not a sign that the relationship with Iran is going to change in any significant way? No, I don't think so. Look, this, is, this was about getting uh, our Americans home. It was not about trying to ping it to uh, the nuclear deal or to ping it to other behavior by Iran. As a matter of fact, George, last Friday we designated some additional Iranian entities for the way they treat their protesters. And just yesterday we designated more entities for... Well, how do you respond to people that say having better relations with Iran would enable their oppression? Yeah, that's an idiotic assessment because it's the, it's the same energy as if we increase the minimum wage, then inflation is going to be out of control. It's like, has it stopped the oppression so far? We've only made matters worse. It's actually the exact opposite in this case, okay? It's literally the exact fucking opposite. The more America squeezes the Iranian population with hopes that they will be able to inevitably rise up against uh, the Iranian government and, like, have a full-scale revolution or whatever the fuck, okay? Uh, uh, the more they do that, the more... Uh, Iran, the more Iran can just say, look, these Western dogs are starving you, and there's truth to that matter, okay? The, in, the entire reason why the Iranian administration looks the way it currently does is due to America's interventions in Iran to begin with, okay? That's it. So looking at, looking at the situation, looking at the situation and going, oh, the same thing that we're doing, that has like been happening since the beginning. Uh, we should we should keep doing that uh, and and expect different results. This is so silly when our intervention is the reason why uh, Iran is the way it is currently. When America gets involved in your affairs, the more reactionary forces. I said this about Russia and Ukraine as well. Okay, when a foreign nation comes into your country and gets involved in your affairs, you end up enabling the hardliners, the fascists, the reactionaries, the, the hyper-nationals, the ultra-nationalists as people who uh, others look to for salvation. Okay, you embolden their position, you justify their existence, you create an environment where, like, they are the guys who are supposed to defend you from Western military intervention. Okay. And that is precisely what happened in Iran. <laughs> Isolating North Korea from the rest of the planet has made them a beacon of democracy. <laughs> exactly. Totally. Or wrongful detention. So we are still going to put sanctions on Iran as appropriate. We have boosted our military presence in, in the Gulf region. Uh, we're still working to, uh, to stymie uh, the Iranians beha Iranian behavior uh, in the Gulf and beyond. Another American being held overseas, Evan Gershkovitz, the Wall Street yeah. Journal reporter in Moscow, appearing in court this morning. What more do we know about his situation? We're still working very, very hard uh, to get him released, as well as Paul Whalen, uh, who has been obviously in jail now for many, many years uh, in Russia. Unfortunately, I wish I had good news on this front, but I don't. Uh, both of these gentlemen are wrongfully detained. Both are. That sucks so bad, dude. I mean, <laughs> this dude getting clapped. I mean, that, that's, you Being know. Being charged sucks. with espionage, which is, of course, a ridiculous charge. But it is, but it is indicative of how, uh, where, where the Russians put them in terms of uh, detainees. So we're going to keep working this. John Kirby, thanks very much. Yes, sir. Hi. What is this? Ah, yes, the reason the Iranian government is murdering, torturing people is because Czechs knows they're being told to do so by America. I'm Iranian. I lived it and I've seen it up close. But thanks for your condescension. Yes, you're right. America had no interest or involvement in Mossadegh uh, uh, being dethroned, okay? Uh, which then uh, was seen as a move by... Uh, it was seen as a move by the entirety of Iran as, as uh, unjust, which then turned around and created a reactionary movement, a reactionary force of fundamentalists that were propped up and took control over the entire government, Um I, I see this is what's incredibly fucking frustrating, okay? This is what's incredibly frustrating about this take because I never said America is the reason why Iran is like torturing people because America directly told Iran to torture people. You fucking idiot. You dumbass. You absolute baboon. What the fuck is wrong with you? What is like, why can't you? have a normal fucking conversation where you engage in like a little bit of fucking critical thinking, 
Okay, so double down on the condescension. Are you talking to me or are you talking to him? Every single fundamentalist country in the Middle East is more reactionary after American involvement versus where they were in the 60s or the 70s or in the 50s in the case of Iran. Okay, they were more progressive. They were making moves to uh, implement social democratic provisions, sometimes even communist ones. Sometimes those communists obviously were fucking insane and, and violent, like in the case of Afghanistan, okay? But the notion that, like, these countries are all reactionary shitholes because, like, they just have reactionary people take control over the country out of nowhere is so silly. I hate that, like, the funniest new things... You literally reduce everything in Iran to being rooted in America's actions. Yeah, dude. Uh, unless, yeah, I know, I know what you want me to say. You want me to say they're bad because they're bad guys, okay? Like it's a fucking Marvel movie. I hate this fucking take, dude. It is so profoundly fucking stupid. And I, this is the new, I'm sorry, the debate perverts online who love American interventions and try to like justify it or normalize it have taken up the same uh the the same stylistic choices that like anti-interventionists and anti-imperialists use in this regard they literally say like well you know the foreign adversary is actually doing imperialism which is why it's okay when we do imperialism okay i hate that i hate that so much and one of the things that they use is this is an amerabrain take which amerabrain is my fucking word you can't use that against me that's number one number two it's not saying America's involvements and, and literally even liking it and comparing it to Ukraine and Russia, okay, and saying that irredentist or imperialist actions oftentimes embolden reactionary forces, okay, often embolden reactionary forces is not an incorrect take. It is a historically accurate take of what happened in fucking Iran. Okay, you can't use my commentary against me to fucking be like, no, actually, you're so America centric in your fucking commentary because the alternative is the dumbest thing you've ever heard, which is, oh, Iran is bad because they're Muslim fundamentalists. That's why it's the Islamic extremism that just, uh, you know, happened out of nowhere. Well, you just kind of it just kind of materialized on its own. And Islam is bad, and that's why they're doing it. And just like every other Muslim country is bad. I'm Iranian, I know, firsthand, right? That's what, you want to, that's what you want me to say? Is that what you want? You literally reduce everything in Iran to being rooted in America's actions? Of course I do that, because it's fucking important. And because you can't fucking argue on the basis of America's involvement and intervention in Iran, okay, you have to turn around and say, yeah, America is in the fucking, uh, in the corner, telling Iranian uh, leadership to be fucking gruesome, okay? That's what I said, right? What are you, fucking baby-brained? Are you that stupid? That's the best straw man you could come up with? It's so in entirely stupid. America has 800 military bases around the world. It's so shocking that they have their hands in every fucking pocket. Okay? It's so crazy. It's so crazy how that happened. They, ha they welcomed us as liberators. That's why it happened, right? All around the fucking world. So how do you explain why America is bad then? You don't seem to use any external factors there. Um, because the external factors that I'm utilizing or in this situation talking about are still rooted in material realities. The reason why America is bad is also rooted in the same material realities. America is an endlessly expansionist nation that literally expanded internally originally to create the fucking continent that you know as the United States of America, basically half of the fucking continent, the North American continent, okay? It was built around the fundamentals uh, uh, of, of uh, indigenous genocide, and defending white supremacist chattel slavery. It was endless resource extraction. And that's why that expansion in the West literally was at the foundation of the American society uh, being designed. It also came from um, 
Western colonial powers, or at least their, their ancestors were, you know, British colonial powers that went and did that same colonialism over indigenous people that all of the other European powers had done in Latin America and in North America as well. So ultimately, America's cultural attitude and America's uh, global hegemonic power and how we got here is also still rooted in uh, a materialist analysis. It's just that um, when we talk about other countries, it's impossible not to engage in some kind of dialectic where the United States of America is not involved in their affairs. Okay? White people are inherently evil is not what I said. Uh, and that is such an idiotic assessment. Why do people come in here to try to, to, to have this kind of debate when they just like make shit up? Are you listening to the words that are coming out of my mouth? There is no inherent evil. We are talking about dialectical materialism. There's no inherent evil in that situation. Okay? It's action and reaction. Let's continue. Hey everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC. Um, we're going to talk about Canada in a second. But as far as the situation in Iran goes, I mean, I tried to look at like who the prisoners we release were on our end. And one of them was like engaged in uh, nuclear engineering. That looks great, mom. One of them was engaged in nuclear engineering. The other one was like fucking trying to bring in uh, uh, laboratory equipment. Those were the guys who were, uh, were imprisoned. And ultimately, uh, I mean, like I said, it just doesn't, like, this is not a bad thing at all. I don't know why the fuck people would try to say that this is, like, a bad negotiation. Especially if they turn around and, and uh, partner this up with some kind of denuclearization agreement again. I mean, it'd be great. Normalizing relations with Iran would be great. This would be good for uh, uh, the Iranian people in general. The idea that this would, like, embolden the regime is fucking stupid. The Iranian regime uh, has has only used embargoes to their advantage, blockades to their advantage, and have, uh, have, have uh, continued their oppressive rule, okay? Because you can justify it to a big chunk of the population when they can feel the Western influence in their country. Okay? <clears throat> anyway, would be low key if Biden normalized a new deal with Iran and then Trump was elected and pulled the football away again. That would be not so funny, in my opinion. Okay? People think that sanctions matter to the dictators in Iran or Syria. Only casualty is innocent, normal civilians. Yes. And, and we're very open about it as well. I mean, collective punishment is the name of the game here. Sanctions are collective punishment on a people that do not deserve it. Okay? They don't deserve it. And, and the idea is like, well, you know, you kind of do deserve it because you just live there. You know, you chose to live there. It's like, well, they didn't really choose to live there. Um, but uh, the, the hope is that like it will create so much economic instability and economic volatility that they turn around and, and rise up against their, uh, rise up against their oppressive authoritarian government. And it's, a silly take, a silly perspective that can possibly work with America's allies, but it can't work with America's foreign adversaries because America's foreign adversaries rely on America uh, crushing them or attacking them so they can remain in an antagonistic position. Look at Erdogan, okay? Erdogan is America's lapdog. He's literally in New York right now, okay? He has done the bidding of NATO from the jump. Has he used it to his advantage? To, to, at the very least, get, like, more favorable uh, opportunities, more favorable coverage that makes him look like he has an antagonistic uh, position uh, with NATO, like he's the big mediator? Absolutely. But ultimately, he will do whatever the fuck America wants him to do. But he can always go back to Turkey and show himself like he is actually uh, the... the uh, the guy who is fighting against Western involvement. There's a reason why in countries like this, oppressive, authoritarian, reactionary forces regularly galvanize their base of support by placing themselves in an antagonistic 
uh, position against the United States of America and Western imperialism and Western imperialists. So when you fucking turn around and justify that and legitimize that through sanctions or through direct boots on the ground, military involvement, like all you're doing is making the situation worse for the people. They're suffering. You're playing a role in continuing their suffering. And also on top of that, you're giving a major talking point to the, the uh, authoritarian reactionary forces that already control every aspect of people's lives there. Okay. It's incredibly stupid. Clear deal. So it's an interesting time to make your American hostages a priority. Biden definitely did prioritize some hostages while leaving other hostages behind, but I wouldn't brag about that one. It's also important for you not to believe the hype about the impact of the release of these Iranian dollars. Iranian dollars, that's a new... Why don't more dictators use a lapdog roll like Erdogan? Well... The lapdog role is kind of like Hungary, okay, Viktor Orban. Okay, Viktor Orban is like a better example, a more interesting example because like European lapdog to the West, right? Viktor Orban relies on EU to exist, okay? He relies on EU and he relies on uh, the European economic engine to uh, continue uh, having any economy whatsoever. But... He also is like, oh, I'm anti-West. I'm anti-Western influence. Like, or even Bolsonaro. Like, these are guys who, well, Bolsonaro never has actually poo-pooed uh, Western imperialism at all. He's just like an open fascist. But my point is, there are plenty of people who claim that they're like anti-Western influence while simultaneously receive uh, receive favorable trade deals and... and um. Uh, and, and receive all of the positive uh, aspects of being in the imperial core, okay? Or being in the sphere of Western influence. So, it, it's, it's really silly to uh, act like these guys have a choice in the matter, just like the Iranian leadership does not have a choice in the matter of being friendly with America, okay? They can't. Because America does not offer them that opportunity. Does that make sense? They can't offer... They, they uh, you know, there's, there's no world in which America's like, yeah, we'll, we'll uh, normalize relations with you guys. Okay? Orban is a cinema for EU politics. He serves to be a complete ass to break the European Parliament. Yeah. Different countries actually have different currencies. I've never heard of an Iranian dollar. But this language is again cleverly tailored to remind you that you should give it back to the people of Iran, except that it just doesn't go to the people of Iran. The Biden administration took pains to make sure that this money is not going to be freely available to the Iranian regime. That money is only used for humanitarian purposes. That means it's used to buy food and medicine. We're told that it's for humanitarian purposes, food and medicine. Do you believe you have the right to use that money in any way that you see fit? This money belongs to the Islamic Republic of Iran. He's not wrong. Naturally, the Islamic Republic of Iran will decide to spend it wherever uh, we need it. At the end of the day, none of that matters because as we've said time and time again, money... Brother, it's their money. Like, what, what are we doing? It's their fucking money, dog. Like, what a ridiculous fucking take. He is fungible. And that it's not used to fund the Iranian military. That's a real... This is, this is literally just them saving face, okay? It's a good deal overall, considering that it's their own fucking money that they're getting back. Um... And both sides in this circumstance are playing the role of saving face. The Iranian government is, of course, going to say that because they're supposed to say that because it is their money. The American government is saying we are making not just like we're not just getting assurances from the Iranian government, but we're making it so that it's like trapped in a bank account that we have control over so we can see where the money is spent because like the money is not going directly into iranian pockets the, or the iranian government is it supposed to it's going to uh like a bank in doha that has 
like pretty stringent rules on where you can take that money and where you can spend that money on. So the money probably won't be utilized uh, as efficiently on like weapons or whatever the fuck uh, Americans are terrified Iran is going to do. Okay. But it is, I don't know. It's just like very, very stupid conversation overall. It's a good thing that, uh, you know, there was a prison swap. It's a good thing if we normalize relations with Iran. These are all good things uh, across the board. Really important concession. What? Worked out by the Biden administration. Worked out by the Biden administration. How did the money get frozen in the first place? Iran sold in 2019... Um, six billion dollars worth of oil to South Korea, because South Korea is an American client state. Uh, America turned to them and said, "It's not legal anymore to do that. We're freezing that money." And so South Korea was like, "Oops, our hands are tied. We have now frozen the six billion dollars that we were supposed to give you because America won't let us pay you." Administration neatly timed, carefully scripted. Enter a bad thing. Enter a solution say the name of the person that you want to attribute the solution to in order to cognitively group a good thing with that. Okay, I hate this kind of like, I don't know what's going on here. This analysis is ridiculous. Um, all right, let's move uh, away from Iran now to 